everyone. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right. So my name is Lisa Roach. I'm a C Python core developer. Actually, all thanks to Raymond Hedinger, my mentor who's sitting here today. So I'm very excited he gets to see me give a talk on how to tell other people to contribute since he got me into contributing. So to start off, how many people here know what C Python is? Okay, some people do, some people don't. If you don't know what it is, it's actually the reference implementation of Python. So what this essentially boils down to is it is everything that you know of of the core Python. So not including third party libraries, but including everything you get by default with Python. So the virtual machine, the standard library, uh, the REPL, PDB, everything that you know of as Python is a part of the C Python reference implementation. So let's play a game. How many people here know how to play two truths and a lie? It's pretty simple. All right, so I'm gonna tell you three facts. Two of them are true, one of them is a lie, and you have to tell me which one you think is the lie. So CPython is an interpreter. The majority of CPython is written in C. And CPython is the most widely used implementation of Python. Any guesses for which one is the lie? Two? 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 Oh my gosh, you guys are so right. <laughs> Spot on. The majority of CPython is written in C. So while CPython was originally written entirely in C and the most of the core libraries are still C, what's happened over time is that as features get added to Python, those features get added as Python code. If those features need some sort of uh, speed improvements or memory enhancements, they might get rewritten as C but the Python original implementation stays. So we've now ended up with C Python as a majority Python code library. The reason why I'm telling you this is because this is a Python meetup group. So I don't wanna scare anybody off and say, this is just for C developers. If you don't know C very well, you can still totally contribute to Python, learn C as you go, or just focus on Python based features. So where can I help? How many times, how many people here have ever had something in Python they wanted changed or fixed? Never run into a bug? <laughs> yeah. There's tons of places where you can help contribute to the C Python library. Bug fixes are the obvious one, or even if you just find a bug, submitting it to bugs at python.org. Feature enhancements, features that may have been in the library sometime but could use some love. Maybe IP Adder doesn't support IPv6 addresses. The world moves on and libraries need to move along with the world. Performance enhancements. There's some core developers who really focus on performance enhancements and you can do some super cool stuff in this space if you're interested and wanna dive deep. New features, these can be a little bit harder to add to the library. Generally, if it's something significant, you have to have a proposal called a Python enhancement proposal. If that proposal gets accepted, you can add your new feature to the library. But because this is a talk on your very first patch, I want to encourage you to look into documentation. <laughs> it might not be the sexiest area to work on, but it is going to be the most immediately fulfilling. You'll be able to get a simple bug, you'll be able to fix it right away. If you work on the dev guide, you can see your changes immediately. Um, and generally there's not a lot of argument or hassle around your patch. It just is we gratefully accept documentation updates. So this is gonna be a little bit more interactive for me. I wanted to show you oops, the important pages of Python. So Python has the Python developer's guide. This is pretty easy to Google if you don't remember this exact link, but let's see if it'll pop up for us. Cool. So when you first wanna get started, go to the Python developer's guide. It's going to show you a quick reference for how to get started. And that's really all you need to start with. There's a bunch of information about more stuff, but this is all you need is these seven steps located in the quick reference. So if you don't know, C Python is actually a GitHub repository. So if you're familiar with using Git, this workflow is going to be super comfortable for you. Um, so the steps are gonna tell you, clone it, it tells you how to build it, tells you how to run the steps, all those sorts of things. It's pretty self-explanatory if you understand Git. The only thing that is a catch, 
We recently moved off of a mercurial source control system to GitHub. We have not yet completed the migration of all of the bugs onto the GitHub issues page. So while you might be used to going to an open source project, finding the issues on that page with CPython, they're actually located at a different website called bugs.python.org. So you will need to go to a separate spot. I don't have a mouse. Lisa? Oh, yes. How long does it take to build uh, Python? Because like, I can't build a Node.js on 32-bit over 24 hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it does not take that long. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. Two, three minutes. A couple minutes. Yeah, two, three minutes. Probably I'll test it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my link is not saw this. Okay. okay. So bugs.python.org. It's not the prettiest UI. Uh, but I want to point out some things for you. If you're truly looking to go make your first patch contribution to C Python, there are some things that kind of help you to notice. Uh, the first thing is on the right hand side, you'll see messages. This is conversations, how many people have posted in this bug thread. So if you see a thread that has 61 messages, it's probably not going to be an easy task you can just pick up. There's a lot of debate around it. For some reason, there's a lot of discourse. So you can totally look at it, see if it's worth your time, but it might be something that's a little bit more challenging. Other things worth looking at is right here. You'll see the little GitHub uh, Octocat logo or paper clips. These show you that there's already a pull request on this bug. So if you are looking to make your first pull request, don't go to one that already has a pull request. It's kind of rude to try to overwrite someone else's pull request and generally you'll be told to just close yours and help the person who's already written one. So don't pick up pick one of those. Uh, and then if these look kind of intimidating to you, if you don't know what all of these words mean on all of these bugs, you can go over here on the left hand side to find this kind of hidden button called easy issues. So these are issues that have actually been labeled as easy by core developers or by whoever created them. So these are a great place to start. Hopefully you'll find lots of documentation bugs here or lots of simple things you can pick up and do in a relatively small amount of time. Uh, so definitely check out easy issues button. So just to show you what one looks like, I saw this one earlier, it looks pretty simple. Update pickle opcode documentation. So it's just a little documentation fix. And you'll see there's some conversation around how to update it but no one has yet claimed this task. So someone could totally come today or here, pick up this task and update the pickle documentation. And I wanted to show you an example of a fully finished bug. Yes, I can take this one. Okay, so here's an example of an issue that was recently completed. That's exactly the kind of issue I'm talking about. So this one is really simple. Documentation was missing some words in some sentences, like it was clearly not grammatically correct. Someone could go fix it. No one's going to tell you not to. Everyone's going to love you for doing this. So Cheryl made this bug and Patrick picked it up. Now Patrick did a great thing by saying, hey, first time contributor, I'm gonna work on this bug. What I would, would recommend you do is say before you even write your pull request, I'm going to work on this bug because especially with the easier issues, people pick them up and it moves so fast that by the time you're done writing your PR, someone else might have already submitted a PR. So if you actually comment and just say, hey, I'm going to pick this up. I'd like to work on this. People respect that and will generally not then pick it up and write a pull request from underneath you. So I recommend first post say, I'm going to work on this, then come back and add your pull request. So he made a PR, and I'll show you what that looks like. So he ran into a few things that you guys will run into. The first problem, quote unquote problem he ran into is he got an error from the, the build bot saying he hadn't signed the CLA. This is super easy to fix. You need to sign a CLA, which is like a legal agreement to work on CPython. Uh, the bot will post instructions for you, so you can feel free to sign it then or sign it before. Uh, you won't be able to get your, pro your PR accepted until you've signed. Uh, the other thing that I see lots of people run into early on is 
this skip news label. So if you have a really simple PR, you don't actually need to write a news, like a news article about it, one of the news blurbs. It's not important enough for us to notify everyone that we've updated this documentation. But our build bots don't know that. So you will actually get a failure that, hey, you don't have news on your pull request, please add news, build bot failure, and people kind of freak out and add news for simple one line changes and stuff like that. Don't worry about it. Don't add news if it's super simple. It's the core developer's jobs to come and add the skip news label. So if you're not able to do it yourselves, just ignore it and close your eyes, it's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that's the main part that I wanted to go over. But you see, he'll, he had a little bit of discussion. He had a core developer come in, give him some feedback. He uh, rejected this change, asked for more feedback. He got a little bot notification saying he was asked for more changes. And then he made a new commit. Core developer pushed, uh, approved it, pushed it. Then he had his first PR in C Python. So that's what I want from you guys is to be able to get your first PR, have this pleasant experience like this man had. So last word of advice is be patient. We try to be as active as possible. We try to review pull requests, but there are a lot every day. And sometimes people think, oh, it's taken a week. No one's looked at it. What do I do? We try to get to it. You can always try to figure out who is the owner of the code space you're working in and add them as reviewers. But overall, be patient. It's not the fastest moving project in the world, but we're out here trying. <laughs> and last little thing, uh, we have a bunch of mailers where you can go get help if you do want to continue to contribute. Uh, there's a core mentorship request. If you are interested in receiving mentorship or you even just have some questions, you can send an email there and a core developer will respond. Uh, there's Python ideas if you have ideas around new features, but you want to get discourse with the community. Uh, Python devs are all around Python development. Uh, Zulip is our IRC alternative. You can go there and sometimes you'll see Mariata does office hours. There's people who are sometimes active there. There's also IRC, which is like <coughs> slightly less active, but occasionally core developers hang out. And then you can see on Discourse, the C Python core developers have their own channels, but they're available for public viewing. So. We need your help. We appreciate any help, whether you're new to Python or you're new to contributing to open source. There's lots of small bugs that you can help out with. Or if you're really good at Python, then we have lots of really hard bugs to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions? Yeah, we can take a question. Moshe. Hi. So you you mentioned that reviews are uh, a little bit of a bottleneck. Is it a way? Is there a way for people who are not core contributors to review code, and is that helpful? Um. Yes. So. So yes, you can totally go, and if you see a pull request, you really understand it. You can go and give a review, and you can actually stamp it. Uh, it won't be ready to be merged until a core developer actually reviews it. But I think it helps as a core developer to see that someone else has gone through it and they may have fixed issues that were previously in that code base and I don't have to go make those comments. So it is actually helpful for other people to review the code, even though the accept doesn't make it merge ready, it's still helpful for core developers. And I think it moves things along a little faster. I can actually speak to that from firsthand experience. I had a core developer recently like say, oh, you were talking about the Lex, like, Lexer module over here, like Schlex. And uh, so like, go review this like outstanding PR. He's trying to get me to become a core contributor. And he said like, even though I'm not a core contributor now, just like comment that this looks good. Yeah. That'll count for something he said. Mm -hmm. One more. Uh, how do you know who owns the code? Is it just you could blame or? Um, there is on the Python developers guide, a section that is um, subject matter experts section. So you can go, Sorry. So you can go and find the subject matter experts and be able to link people that way. But yeah, if the code base doesn't have a subject matter expert, then just get blame or something like that will be relatively helpful. Yeah, you want to answer? I that? mean, can you mention can you mention the uh, mentorship list? Uh, the, the core, core mentorship list. Yes. <laughs> what about it? Sorry. <laughs> Tell people about it. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> 
there's several mailing lists and they differ widely in how they're used. So you can go to Python ideas and say any random crazy thing and it will be fine. <laughs> you go to Python dev, you should be aware that that list goes that has the last I looked somewhere between 20 and 25,000 people. You're talking to a very big audience. Don't say anything silly there. And there's the core mentorship list, which is a place to discuss what should I do next and whatnot. That is your best uh, starting uh, place. But don't start with uh, Python dev. Uh, <laughs> I fear that list in some ways because what you say gets broadcast to an enormous number of people. So we'll start I, with the mentorship list. I don't post on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Python ideas, yeah, you can really say anything you want. Uh, <laughs> if you're staying up really late, you just took some Ambien and you have some ideas about Python, Python ideas. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>